What's up, everybody, and welcome to this week's USANA Athlete Livestream. I'm your host, Jason Nacy. Today, I have an unbelievable guest. She's the captain of the women's USA boxing team, an Olympic hopeful. Please welcome Jenny Fuse. What's up? Hey, Jason. Hey, everybody. How, How you doing? doing? I'm doing good. It's been I'm a while. I know, right? I, I always get nervous saying yeah. your last name. Did I say it right? <laughs> Yeah, you got it. You finally got it. Okay. Jason. All right. All right. And, you're good. You got and it. the whole time before we went live, I was like, okay, I got to make sure I get this right. So I'm going to ask her and I totally forgot to ask. Uh, yeah, and I'm just like, right before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm glad I didn't like, mess okay, it up. You're good. So how's everything going? How's, uh, how's the Olymp Olympic trials going for you? Uh, well, no, the Olympic trials happened in December of 2019, remember? Yes, not um, the, I, I didn't mean Olympic trials, qualifying for your weight class. Qualifying yeah. for weight class, yeah. So so right now I'm in uh, the Chula Vista Training Center um, and with the team, and we're here to get ready for the qualifiers in Argentina. Um, oops, sorry. Did I lose you? My bad. Good. Okay. But... Uh, but this is uh, this just happened like a couple of days ago, actually. So the qualifiers ended up getting canceled due to COVID problems, obviously. So what they're doing, what they're gonna have to do now is because they've had the Asian qualifiers and the European qualifiers. So we're the only side of the country that hasn't qualified yet. So what they're gonna do is take the ranking of all the Americas, which is well, who won Pan Ams. Yeah. Um, in 2019. So I got silver in, in Pan Ams. So I'm ranked number two and it was the top five in my weight class. So that means I'm qualified for the Olympics. I'm going to Tokyo. Yes. Uh, so that's, that's not public knowledge yet. This is, this no, is it. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it, it probably won't be announced till, uh, late May because they have to do all the processing and everything. But, um, yeah. That's awesome. Right. Congratulations. <laughs> that's, the, that's the good news. Yeah, thank you. So pumped for you. I know, right? Yeah. Ah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So how's yeah, training yeah. going? So because of that, we've kind of uh, brought the intensity down of training. Um, so we're kind of just like in a maintenance phase yeah. uh, just to maintain everything. Um, and we're going to – so France came – uh, cause we were going to have France and Kazakhstan come for this camp to yeah. prepare for the qualifiers. Kazakhstan ended up not getting their visas in time. So France, but France came. So they're in like the quarantine process that everyone has to go to yeah. when they get here first. And then we'll start sparring them next week. We'll do like, it, they're called test matches. Yeah. Uh, what we do here in camp. So it's, it's the same thing as a fight. You warm up the same way and it's three, three minutes. Um, uh, so it's kind of like the same uh, vibe of uh, going into a fight, but it's just sparring really. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You feeling so good? That's, that's, yeah, I'm feeling good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was ready to fight in three weeks. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it's a bummer. You don't get to, but at the same time, Hey, you, uh, you, you qualified, you're going to the Olympics. So at the end of the day, I guess that's all that, that's all that matters. And you can go whoop up on some butt over in, uh, over in Tokyo. Right. Get my gold. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so how did you get into boxing? Uh, so I was a runner back in the day and I actually went to LSU as a walk-on for their cross country and track team. Um, so that was freshman year. I ended up getting in a little trouble because I did a prank on a friend and, uh, the university property was ruined in the process. So, uh, because of that, I got kicked off the train, kicked off the team. But it was a blessing in disguise, actually, because I ended up meeting a guy who was a professional boxer and we became best friends. And so I got to watch him train and I was like, you know, I, I need to have been, you know, I'm not running anymore. I need to, and I've been an athlete all my life and I'm very competitive. So I was like, you know, I want to try this boxing thing out. So, um, I, I told the coach at the, at this, um, it's called Breck 14th street, kind of a club gym there in yeah. Baton Rouge. But yeah, so I thought, let, let's do this. I want to fight. I want to, you know, I want to do this. So he started training me and, and I just got to this level. I got really good at it. <laughs> I got to say, so anybody who watches this, if, if you ever get a chance to meet Jenny in person, she's got some crazy stories, probably some yeah. of the craziest stories. We won't, we won't get into them here, 
<laughs> but I got to say, some of the crazy stuff I've ever heard and, and some of your experiences are, are, are wild, awesome, crazy, all rolled right. up into uh, into <laughs> a, a troublemaking burrito, I would call it. <laughs> right. Story for days. Story for days. <laughs> oh, yeah. We had some, we had some good times. Um, yeah, that was fun. Back at, uh, was it 2019? When, when you came into convention, was it 2018? I think it was 2018. Yeah. 2018. Yeah, yeah, 2018. Yeah. That was, that was, a, that was a lot of fun hanging out right, with yeah. Yura and the whole crew. Yeah, um, that was fun. <laughs> I miss those times. We need to get, we need a, uh, we need all this to clear up so we can hang out again. Uh, everybody right? get, get back together. Back. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. So <laughs> how's boxing helped you with your OCD? And a pro- maybe a lot of people don't know that you have OCD, that you're open about it. So maybe let's get into, um, if you want to explain a little bit about your OCD um, and, and and how boxing, because I believe it's boxing really helped you get through a lot of a lot of stuff, right? Definitely, yeah. With the past couple of years, yes, if I didn't have boxing, you know, I don't know where I'd be. But um, yeah, I was, I was diagnosed with um, OCD when I was in eighth grade. I was officially diagnosed because um, I was suffering actually from anorexia and they had discovered that was my OC. It was my OCD. That was like the underlying cause of my anorexia, but that's when I was officially diagnosed and I went through therapy all throughout high school um, and kind of had it under a manageable um, state, went off to college, um, still pretty manageable uh the past and you know i got started in boxing during college yeah. so that kind of helped i think to give me like a focus but it was the past um like four three years past three years where it you know I've, i guess you want to call it like a relapse where it it came and hit me back even harder or you know this is the worst or the most i've struggled with my ocd in all my life so um and the reason that even though it's gotten worse I've been able to still continue on this path to this journey to the Olympics and stay strong because boxing has given me, has given me like a a focus and a value in life and like almost like a purpose. And that focus is what helps me overcome my OCD thoughts and behaviors. You know, I'll get stuck in my rituals all the time, but you know, if, you know, I, I always pull myself out of it because of my boxing, like I got to go train, you know, yeah. or I got to get rest for sparring, yeah. um, in two hours. So it's my boxing that helps me get away from, or pulls me out of my OCD and, and, you know, continue this, um, you know, goal in life that I pursued, uh, 12 years ago, which was getting a gold medal at the Olympics. Yeah. So, I mean, is it, I think a lot of people who who don't struggle with OCD don't realize, you know, how tough it can be. And it really, uh, you know, from, from what I've seen, some of the, the stuff I've read about, it could really pull you down into a dark place where, uh, yeah. where, where it's really hard to get out of. Um, yeah. Do you have any advice? Maybe if people, somebody's watching this with, with OCD or somebody who's struggling, do you have any advice you want to give? Anybody? Well, you know, for the longest time, and this is also why I've become open with it for the longest time, I didn't want to accept I had this OCD, you yeah. know, or I didn't see it as a problem. Um, and as I got older, and I've struggled with it more, um, I realized like, okay, I have this, but it doesn't identify me. It's okay. You know, I accept that I have this problem. And I used to fight wanting help. I don't need help. I don't need help. But when I, when I kind of realized like, okay, you know, maybe I can't manage this on my own, you know, I, I need some support and I reached out for support. I got tons of help. Um, I, uh, I got, I have a friend who struggles with um, OCD who I met in inpatient treatment. And uh, uh, when I was in eighth grade, hold on sorry you're good i got it i got it there's people distracting me <laughs> um it's my wrist I'm sorry it's my teammates that are distracting me through the window no so it's all it's all good hey <laughs> this is this is the uh the beauty of going start live start. right <laughs> oh, they won't leave me alone like stop stop <laughs> but, and, anyways uh but it was it was a um overwhelming amount of support yeah. and help I found when I actually, you know, reached out and say like, you know, 
I'm really struggling. This is, you know, I, I can't do this on my own. So yeah. don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be ashamed of, you know, like realizing that, you know, this, you know, realizing that you're struggling with something, even though you think, you know, like I, I'm a very strong old person. I was like, there's no way I'll let my OC ever beat yeah. me, but there's plenty of days I've let it beat me. And I've realized that it's okay. You know, I'll just, there's help out there. Yeah. So I did one of the first live streams I did, uh, w- when we were doing my, doing them on Facebook, I did it with Nick Mayhew. And what you said just reminded me of something that he said, it's, it's okay to not be okay. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah, exactly. It's great advice. So one thing that, uh, that a lot of people might not know about you is you love pirates. Like yes. that's, that's like a big thing for you. <laughs> how, did, how did you get in into that? Like what, what, what's your fascination with pirates? Well, I love, okay. So I've loved the water and I love boating. I love being on the, you know, on the sea. (laughs) So, um, and I've always liked the, I like, you know, I've read a lot of history about the, about pirates. Um, and I just like the, you know, the idea of them is, you know, they, they fought for kind of like their freedom and right and didn't want to live by, you know, the normal society ways Mm -hmm. or didn't agree with it. And, so they started kind of like their own uh, community, the pirate community, and and just wanted to be free and sail, uh, sail the seas. Um, and so that's kind of what like drew me to the uh, the idea of piracy or and the lifestyle of it. Yeah. Um, but it kind of came into my boxing world because when I was uh, when they had me when they announced me as team captain for the 2016 Olympic team, I would do the warm ups with the I. I I'd lead the warmups and my commands for certain exercises would be like pirate commands, like fire the cannon yeah. or lower the anchor or something <laughs> like that. And my, my teammates are like, what the heck is going on? And I'm just like, guys, y'all are my crew. You know, I'm the captain. We're on a journey to get the gold, you know? And they're like, oh, okay, okay. And so they got, they got into it. And so they started calling me, you know, uh, the pirate. That's and awesome. everything it's kind of so it's, it's kind of uh stuck with me um throughout you know my my boxing journey and uh and that's kind of how it came about nice nice so <laughs> i like how that all tied in i didn't i didn't realize you know going for the gold your crew all yeah. that, that, that that's really cool um yeah. so if we've got any young athletes who who are aspiring to become a professional boxer do you have any advice for those for those young kids or maybe the young girls who maybe are a little afraid to get into the sport because they feel like it might be too manly or whatever you have you have you have any advice for for those people who'd be watching right well if you're interested in boxing and want to try it don't let any of the external like forces determine what you want to do it's not meant for girls you know you're will never be um entertaining as the men you know don't worry about that believe in yourself for one and do what you want to do and and go do it and and at least try it at least give it a try if you don't like it then you don't like it move on and if you really want to take it serious um what's helped for me is is that i i stuck with people i trusted and that i could tell um uh wanted the best for me yeah you know and so finding that perfect team that I, works well with me and they work well with each other is really what has helped me get to this level that I'm at without them I wouldn't be here so finding a good team and you know just you know doing what you want to do just don't worry about what people say or what should be yeah yeah um so I know you've you've got a really close friend. She might even be your best friend who's gone pro. And we've chatted a little in the past about you possibly going pro, but you can't compete in the Olympics. If you, if, if, if you turn pro, is that correct? Yeah. So, um, there's other countries that are letting their, their pros come back and compete in the Olympics, but America still hasn't allowed that. So, you know, even though I didn't qualify my spot in 2016, um, you know, I, I debated there for a very short time if I was going to go pro 
or, or not because if i go pro then i can't yeah. you know i won't be able to get my gold my pirate you know my yeah. my treasure yeah. chest is going to be empty your, and i gotta get filled your bounty? up my bounty my booty your pirate my booty, booty. <laughs> my pirate, <yes>. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, you know what, I'm going to, you know, that's what I really want. And that when I started boxing, um, I forgot to say this. When I started, I, w I went to my first uh, national tournament in 2010, which was the Women's National Golden Gloves. And that's where they announced that they were putting women boxing in the Olympics. So 2012, the London Games was the debut for women's boxing in the Olympics. So when they announced it, I had, you know, I looked at my coach and I said, this is what I want to do. I've always wanted to go to the Olympics and now here's my outlet yeah. and here's my opportunity. So I'm going to do it. And, and, you know, I, I remember that day I was like, this is what I want to do. I still graduated from college, but I put my whole career yeah. on hold to, to get this gold. That's cool. So yeah. we talked a little bit about this before we went live, but you know, a lot, a lot of people think that, you know, you're, you're, you're so good at boxing. Um, I think people just assume, oh, she's always been good. She's always, you know, she's, she's got this unbelievable gift, right? But uh, was there ever a time that, that, that you felt like quitting and not, not doing the sport anymore? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I'll tell you this this sport you have to have a lot of patience for one yeah because uh, of you know it's a subjective based sport when you're in the fight and you got the judges but i i took me a good six years to fully get to the number one spot to be the number one in the u.s i tried and tried i was number two for the longest and i and there was a lot of times where i felt like i had won the fight to deserve that number one spot more than once I felt like it and I never yeah. got it so there was yeah there was times right there where I was very frustrated and like man you know you know maybe this isn't for me or I'm never gonna get the decision they don't you know like I had those doubts I was like maybe I maybe I didn't think I did as good as I you know felt maybe I really was bad maybe you know you know I had all those kind of doubt thoughts but again I <clears throat> I don't let those thoughts like get to me. That's one one thing I'm good about. OCD thoughts yeah. are different, but those kind of <laughs> thoughts like be like, you know what? No, I know I'm good. I know I was better than that girl. I know I'm the best in the world. Um, and so I just kind of, you know, uh, kept uh, kept positive and got back in the gym and just worked harder and harder and never gave up on myself because I knew I knew it. I knew eventually I was gonna get the number number one spot. I knew I was the best, and I did took a little bit of time and a lot of hard work, but I got there. Well, and I think that's the biggest key right there. Uh, I, I feel like a lot of people, they get to, they get to a certain spot and they're just like, okay, I'm not, uh, I'm not good enough or, or I can't do this, or I don't want to put in the work because uh, to get to your level, that's a, that's a lot of work. I mean, you just talked oh, yeah. about this, this six year journey to get to the, to the number one spot and you know, a lot of ups and downs, but it's the, the, the fact that you, you, you didn't want to give up, but let's talk about the, the work though, because I, I think that's, you know, I, I love that. Um, I've seen this a ton, the, the picture of like a, uh, um, an iceberg and the tip yeah. of the iceberg is the success or the fame or whatever, right? And people don't see all the work, the blood, the sweat, the tears, the late nights, the early mornings that go into it. Let's talk a little oh, bit yeah. about, you know, your work ethic and, and you know, what you've had to put in to get to the level that you're at. Right. Well, like I said, when I made that commitment to really shoot for the Olympics, like that meant lifestyle change in everything in my life um you know I wasn't number one so I still had a hustle but with you I can, you can't have a full-time job with the yeah. kind of training you need to do for boxing it's just impossible and if you want to get to that level you have to have that kind of type of training so, it's, so that's that's the balance that's the heart that was the hard part balancing it out but I was able to hustle and train people early in the morning in the midday late at night and then when I, you know, made sure, you know, the times I trained, I told my clients, you know, I set those off for my times to train, dedicated yeah. those times to train always. Um, but yeah, that, that meant like, you know, 
not much sleep on my feet all the time. And, and that was for a good couple of years. And that's, those were the years leading up to when I finally got the number one spot. So, you know, I, I, I just graduated from college. And so I, you know, I could have gone to, you know, focusing on my kinesiology career and, and gone that route. But, you know, I was like, no, I, I want to do this. And so yeah. it took all my time and the in-between times I had to dedicate to recovering and, you know, keeping healthy. So, um, you know, I, I pretty much, those, those are the, the like last eight years, you know, is, is, is it can be lonely because you're all about, you yeah. know, this is all the hours you need to be in the gym and, or at home taking care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And the discipline. Yeah. Discipline, yeah, yeah. I think you can't be like, oh, maybe I'll just go out this night and then I go spar. It yeah. doesn't work that way. Not with boxing. I mean, that's that's the hardest thing for me is is the discipline. <laughs> you know, some of those days when you don't feel like getting out of bed and and putting the work in, and you're like, oh, maybe I just maybe I need a day to to recover, which is not really yeah. a day to recover. It's just that's what you tell yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at yeah, least me. <laughs> Make me feel like yeah, maybe, maybe I do need an extra day for for this. Yeah, no, I don't know what you mean, but no, I've had those days plenty, and I've like struggled to get up. Oh, but again, it's always the the thing that keep, gets me up and um, gets me back in the gym or put you know makes me push hard is that gold medal. Yeah, yeah. I can't I can't wait for the Olympics to watch yeah. you win that gold. That's gonna be Hell yeah. that's gonna be awesome. Like I'm really. You know, that's one thing that this job has changed for me is now the Olympics, like they were always fun to watch, but now they like have so much more meaning for me because I've got really good friends who are out there competing and, and, you know, it's just a, it's a different vibe for me now than it was, you know, like eight years ago. So, yeah. yeah, definitely. Me too. Me too. <laughs> So are you a little bummed? I, they're not letting anybody, uh, they're not letting family go to Tokyo, oh. are they? No, no family, no spectators, not even like, not even all the staff of the USOPC can come. It's only certain. Yeah. Wow. And so that's, yeah, that's the bummer because that, you know, that's part of the experience, having your family there and having people watch. And so that's, yeah, that's a little yeah. I'm a little bummed about that, but so at least the Olympics is happening though. So I, yeah, that's, that's all I'm excited. That's that I'm happy for. Yeah. So I got to tell you just a, just a quick story. Um, this, this might help might not, but, uh, I signed up, this was like six years ago to do a full Ironman in Lake Tahoe and they had wildfires that, that year. And when I got into town, the race was on a Sunday. I got into town on a Thursday night, um, or it was a Friday night, tons of smoke everywhere. And I was like, oh man, this isn't good, right? And then um, Saturday was beautiful. I was like, ah, oh, this, this, this is great. And then I woke up early Sunday morning. Well, Sunday night, I could see a big wall of clouds. And I was like, man, I hope that's not the, the smoke blowing in. And sure enough, I woke up really early and couldn't even see like 30 feet out the, uh, oh, out the window. So long story short, it ended up getting canceled. I had my dad who was running a half Ironman that, uh, that day as well. So it was the first time I think Ironman had ever done a full and a half at the same time. Oh, okay. So it was cool. I was going to be on the course with my dad. My mom was there, my sister, my wife, like had all that support. Well, long story short, it ended up getting canceled, and I did the uh, the Ironman back east the next week, right? And it took okay. some finagling to try and get there. I was there by myself. Like, uh, you know, uh, nobody else. We'd already done all the travel stuff, you know, getting ready for, yeah. uh, for Tahoe. So it was a bummer, but at the same time, as soon as I finished that race and I had that medal, it was just like, it was, it was it, worth it. Yeah. 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 It's so worth it. I mean, it, it, it would have been cool to have people at the finish line, but at the same time, like it didn't change what I had accomplished. So I guess the point I'm getting at is, yeah, it's a bummer. You're not going to have all that support there, but 
at the end of the day, it's not going to change what you accomplished. So it, uh, yeah. it'll still be an unbelievable moment for you. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah, that's what I, I know I'll still have that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still, it's a little heartbreaking. I'm, I mean, yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Um, all right, let's shift gears a little bit. How long have you been a USANA athlete? Oh, I think I first tried your stuff back in 2013. And since then I've never stopped. Yeah. I wow. loved it. I love it. Wow. We're uh, yeah. at eight years now. Eight years. I know. Wow. That was fast. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun, Gosh. right? Yeah. So what's your favorite USANA product? Oh my God. I like them all. Honestly, Ugh. it's hard to say one, but I'll, Say my three favorite is the Koki Koki Ten One Hundred, yep. um, the Rev obviously because I'm training all throughout the day, so having yep. Rev is awesome. And then um, your vitamin C packs, especially for you know combat sports who or athletes that cut weight. Yeah. Um, that cutting weight process, especially for me, because I have to cut how many like five times in one week of competition, so my immunity gets kind of yeah. low. So that vitamin C. I, during competition, I'm on that and I feel so much, it makes me, you know, makes me feel great. Um, it doesn't feel like, you know, or the weight cut is not a problem as much. Yeah. So why have you been with USANA for so long? What is it that, that, that keeps you, keeps you around? Well, for one, the product's great and I feel great on it. Um, for another thing is, you know, being an Olympic athlete, you have to be cautious about every single thing you put in your yeah. body, even the water you drink where, you know, especially, you know, if you're in another country, where did it come from? But it's so nice to know that, it, um, every USANA, USANA product I take, I don't have to worry. I don't have to, you know, be like, is this good? Is this bad? I don't know. Should I not say, you know, I can just always know I'll be good. Um, with satisfied with the um, feeling of it, but just satisfied that it's a safe product and it, you know, won't uh, jeopardize any of anything with my yeah. boxing. Yeah. Yeah. That was going to be my next question. Um, but you answered it. Why you trust USANA, yeah. but uh, yeah. is, is because it's NSF certified for sport. So yes. you don't have to worry about the, the banned substances. Um, all right. So what's next for you? Obviously the Olympics. Um, yes. That's what we're, like 90 days out, something like that, getting close to Yeah, it was a yeah, it was like a what's the day? Oh yeah, it was a hundred days out a week ago. Yeah, yeah so 90 days yeah, out great. Yeah. yeah. So we're yeah. Getting getting close. Are you I getting, know it's gonna it's gonna be right, it's gonna happen like that. I know it. I know it. it's gonna come by so fast. So what are what are your emotions like right now? Are you just getting antsy to get out there, getting a little nervous, um, just ready to go out and and, and fight? Uh, well, honestly, you know, because of the way I got qualified, the way, you yeah. know, it got, how it got canceled and I just got, um, qualified through rankings hasn't really hit me yet, you know, cause it's not, I didn't expect it to happen like this. This kind of threw me for a loop, but it also kind of been like, it kind of took like this uh, weight off me. Like, okay, now I'm there. I finally yeah. got that spot. So now I can just focus nothing, nothing, but getting that gold. So um, I guess it's kind of put me in a different, like, um, uh, like a mindset. mental, yeah. mental zone. Yeah. Mindset. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just ready to, you know, I feel great and I feel in great shape. I just want to continue this, make sure my health stays like this till yeah. the Olympics. And, um, and then, yeah, we're ready to go kick some ass. Jason. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Last question. And I'll let you go. Really, really appreciate you taking the time today. But um, one thing I really like to ask people is what's one thing that you do every day that really helps you? And it, it could be something really small as like five minutes of meditation or something you do every morning or just before you go to bed or throughout the day. What's one, one quick thing that everybody can do that, that, that you do every day that helps you? Uh, well, with me, I'm always running around and always feel like uh i never just have time to breathe so i'll try to and usually i'm at home i'm by the water or you know i'm in colorado where it's really pretty so i try to walk to some kind of like nature place sit down yeah. whether it's for five minutes breathe and just like you know remember like where i'm out in life and and what i've accomplished and and just to be thankful 
That's awesome. I try to do that every day. There you go. There you go. Hey, that's, that's good. I, you know, I think that's probably one of the biggest things people can do, uh, every day is just really be grateful for, for what you have and where you're at. Um, I always, I always tell people it can always be worse. It can always oh, yeah. be worse. Somebody always oh, yeah. has it worse than you. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. That's what, I, you know, when I think I have it bad, I always remember, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. No, so yeah, you're right. Well, you're again, right. I really appreciate you taking the time today. Um, love chatting with you. I have I love being able to see you again. Um, I know, right? I think the, the last time I saw you was that, that shoot we did like a week before, oh. or like, what was it? A couple weeks or a month before the pandemic? Before so. the, yeah, because that's right. I was getting ready for the qualifiers that yeah. I was, I'm supposed to be getting ready for now. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, well, yeah. anyways, thanks again. <laughs> I know you're super busy and, uh, and even on the road. So I appreciate you mm-hmm. taking the time and uh, of course. Yeah. good luck. We'll all be watching you at the Olympics. All right, Jason. Yeah. Nice to talk to you. All right. See <laughs> all right. Bye.